This time I grab a bullet train into Tokyo, spend some quality time with these little piggies at the pig cafe, see the crazy shops of Harajuku and the famous Shibuya crossing with some parks and gardens along the way. Keep watching! Japan was the first country to develop and build a high-speed train network. The trains are known as Shinkansen, which translates as new trunk line, but they are more commonly known in English as the bullet train. As a foreign tourist, you can purchase a Japan Rail Pass, which allows unlimited travel in a given period. To work out how many trains you plan on taking, a single ticket may work out cheaper if you're only moving around a small amount. Trains can run at an impressive 200 miles an hour, so covering the distance between Tokyo and Osaka, for example, takes just two and a half hours. Trains can be up to 400 meters end to end, and usually have two or three classes of travel to choose from. Prices vary depending on time and route. For example, I paid 100 pounds for a one-way Osaka to Tokyo ticket, traveling on a Friday afternoon in standard class. Tokyo is the world's largest metropolitan area and is home to over 38 million people. My train arrived into Tokyo Station, however I was staying across town in Shinjuku, so I had to navigate the metro in rush hour. Routes are signposted, but you will get lost. Shinjuku is known as the entertainment hub of the city. It's a good mix of tourists and locals. There are literally thousands of restaurants and bars to choose from, and Shinjuku Station is very well connected to explore other parts of the city. Robot Restaurant is also located here. It's for tourists and is pricey, but if you Google it, it looks crazy inside. Have you ever been here? What did you think? Good morning from Tokyo. I've left the madness of Shinjuku behind me and I'm taking a walk to Shibuya which is another kind of crazy area famous for the big crossing. Um, the route to get there is through this really cool park um, really peaceful but when we get to Shibuya it's going to be a bit different. I think the thing with Tokyo is it's so massive there's never going to be enough time to do everything so your best bet is to research what you want to see and do before you get here. Get all the metro maps and stuff <clears throat> on your phone because they're a bit of a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. And the stations are so big, navigating them is a problem, but you just have to get used to it. Um, I chose to walk today. It's a really nice sunny day. It's the middle of November. I've got jeans and a t-shirt on, so pretty lucky. Yoyogi Park is midway between the popular areas of Shinjuku and Shibuya and is home to various temples such as Niji Jingu. The park is very popular and always busy, but does offer some solace from the concrete jungle just next door. Ima plaques are traditionally sold at temples across Japan and are said to bring good luck. During my visit, there was a display of bonsai trees.
Harajuku is the home of crazy Japanese fashion and cool street food. It's fun to walk along the main street and you're guaranteed to see things you have never seen anywhere else in the world. The famous Shibuya crossing is a must-see when in Tokyo. Up to two and a half thousand people cross the street at a time. There are a few high up cafes around to get a bird's eye view of the spectacle. Shibuya also has shops selling everything you could ever need plus more. The Shinjuku Goyen National Garden is another beautiful oasis from the urban madness. Entry is 500 yen for adults and includes access to all parts of the park. The garden is one of Tokyo's largest, with spacious lawns, tranquil lakes and walking paths. There are three different types of garden to explore. A Japanese landscape garden, a formal French garden and English landscape garden. There are several pavilions to see too, and even a traditional Japanese tea house. The park is one of the best places to see cherry blossom in spring, but you'll still be able to see a huge variety of plants any time of year. There is also a greenhouse which is home to many tropical and subtropical plants and even a waterfall. After walking around Harajuku, I saw a sign for the Mi Pig Cafe. After I researched it online, I booked myself a slot to have a drink with the micro pigs. 
You can book a 30 minute or a one hour time slot online and it's free to do so, but you must buy a drink inside. You sit on the floor whilst the super cute piggies are free to roam around. And if you're super lucky, they may take a nap on your lap. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed our quick day trip to Tokyo. If you want to see more, please subscribe to our channel. But until next time, happy travels from the Memory Seekers. <laughs>